a lot of times you don't really get into a trade because of the price of the option. You get into a trade by how the chart looks, right? So I kind of take that same analogy um, as far as, you know, when I'm getting out a lot of times, I do a lot of my stock losses by the chart instead of by how my percentage is, right? And can that hurt sometimes? Yeah, but just the way that my system is, that's what works for me, right? So if you do your stock losses with percentages, nothing wrong with that at all because there can be times where my percentage will be a lot, um, my percentage loss might be a lot higher than someone else's because I get out by the charts, but um, that's just what works for me, right? Um, so this 177 is like the cutoff area for me. Um, so I was really looking for like a four hour close below 177 for my stop loss. But um, if I get a one hour close below 177, I will, I will um, close this thing out. Now, don't fall in love with a position and don't fall in love with the direction. Why do I say that? Because what you see right here, this is a descending triangle, right? So we got this descending triangle right here. So we know if this thing breaks below, it can start falling. It's right here at 177. So let's zoom in and kind of see what we can see. If we look on the five minute chart, we know on the larger time frame, let me show you guys, let me teach you guys something. On the larger time frame, this is the four hour, it's kind of bearish, it's in a descending triangle. So you already have that notion that okay this thing may be bearish so if you see something being bearish on a larger time frame such as the four hour or daily there is nothing stopping you from day trading that in the same direction it actually works better if you try to day trade that in the same direction because you already have that larger time frame bias let me know if that makes sense that is something very very crucial to my day trading I'm always making, no matter if it's a day trade or swing trade, all of my moves are based upon the larger time frame. If the move is happening on a larger time frame, think about it like this. If something is, is shooting straight up, right, on a daily, that means every day is going up. Doesn't that also mean that there has to be indications on a smaller time frame that's making that same thing go up? Like that's 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 the that's the thought process behind that, right? Everything is not just charts, 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 charts. A lot of this is is making sense of what you see, right? It's not about oh, I can I can see a flag, I can you know I can see a pennant, I can see a I can see a demand, I can see a supply. Like you have to be able to understand what's going on, and you have to be able to apply this stuff, right? It's not just as black and white as as you. If it was just as black and white as, you know, buy a call when you see a flag, buy, uh, you know, put whenever you see it breaking below a pattern, whatever, then everybody would be making money. But that's not the case. Right. So it's all about how do you apply this thing? All right. So we know at, um, Apple kind of looking for this break below this 177. And this is something else too. drop a lot of gems on y'all early because I know I'm going to only be on here for two, about 20 minutes. Don't buy something just because it gets above or below a price point. That is not what you want to do. It's not about the price point itself. It's about the reaction at the price point, right? So just because this thing breaks below 177 don't mean, hey, get inputs, get inputs. That, that's not what that means. You want to see what is this thing doing at 177? Is this thing making, um, you know, lower lows? Is it already, you know, forming some type of divergence? Is it is it forming bearish candles at this level? Does it have volume? Like, it's... One thing alone is not a strategy. That's something that I try to stress a lot. One thing alone is not a strategy, right? So if you just try to use patterns and nothing else, you're not going to be successful. If you just try to use, um, you know, levels and, and, and nothing else along with it, that's not going to work. You have to use things in conjunction. Let me know if this makes sense. I'm dropping some stuff on y'all, man. Dropping some so all right let's see what spy is looking like so spy right now spy right now this five minute candle right here is pretty bearish okay so we know if spy breaks below spy really has to hold 442 if spy doesn't hold 442 it's probably gonna get ugly. all right so let's mark 442 and i'm going to 
this is the pre-market low. PM low, right? And why are we already kind of have that bearish notion? Um, we know that the market has been going down. You know, this could possibly be a bounce point for SPY. Um, as far as a place that it could look to run to and reject. If you guys seen what I posted earlier, I had up here. Um, because yes, I do use a level to level system, but I do not neglect other types of concepts as well, right? So I love to use levels, but something I am also implementing is supply and demand. Now, what you will notice with supply and demand is they will be near level. Supply and demand tells you why these levels work, right? So we have a supply level right here on the 15 minute. Notice that this zone is right where we have a key level. Now let's notice where, it, what key level is this? This is 444 which is a super crucial resistance that we've seen in the past. And you can tell that from right here, look what happened. Look, this is what I'm talking about. Look at the reaction that happened at the level, right? So imagine if someone, I know this was, this, this was, you know, market was closed at this time, but let's just say this was during market open and someone just bought um, calls just because it got above, right? And was neglecting other factors, neglecting that this was a key level um, you know, things like that, they they would have got clapped, right? But you it's all about the reaction at the level, not just getting above it or below it, right? And sometimes there will be fake outs. You know, you have to, I mean, you just have to you have to accept that as a trader. But one thing that I want you to notice that is kind of what I just said, these levels and these zones be going hand in hand a lot of times because these zones kind of tell you why these levels are where they are all right so we know um for spy we know it has to for things to really kind of go down some more we really need it to go below 442 so what i'm finna do um if y'all don't know i use i use the free version of, of trading view like because i the way i trade i really focus on one thing at a time so i really don't need to have six seven charts up because i'm always focusing on one thing at a time so alerts are a huge part of what i like to do so what I'm about to do here, I'm about to set a SPY alert, and I'm going to set this SPY alert for 442.2, right? And that's just going to let me know, 442.2, that's just going to let me know that, hey, actually, I'm going to do it a little bit higher. 442.25, that's going to let me know that this thing is coming down. Doesn't mean it's going to break this level and continue down, but it lets me know that it's, that's, you know, this is the area that it's in. So I'm going to do a price point or price alert at 442.25 and I'm also do one at 443 hmm, I'll do one at 443.9 I'm choosing 443.9 because that lets me know that we're about to enter a supply zone so just by using these two alerts I will know exactly what spy is doing without having to sit here and stare at my screen now yes I love to trade i love to chart but i don't love to sit here and stare at the screen all day that's not what i like to do trading you you know you a lot of times you're trading to get your time back you're not getting your time back if you sit here looking at the screen all day all right so um that that's just something i like to do and i'm looking at this right here um i just noticed that on the 15 minute we kind of formed this you know you can simply just make a trend line right here um and this kind of this may tell a lot as well this is the 15 minute right here and yes we're only five minutes into the market open um but on this trend line this would be first second third touch so this thing if this thing rejects here on this 15 minute it kind of it would be kind of bad for the market so um right now it's kind of breaking out but we'll see i do have a little small level right here at 443.26 uh just just kind of looking out for that um i know i'm I'm saying a lot of stuff very quickly. So let me know if something is unclear or, you know, anything like that. But I'm just trying to give you guys an insight on how I think about things and, you know, what I'm looking for, right? You always want to trade with the direction of the market. And I like to trade within the trade within the trend, right? Um, so SPY is kind of pushing here, which is, you know, we kind of expect that. We know it can can possibly push up here. Right. So when it gets into this zone, it's going to be in interesting to see what happens if it gets there. Um, I think we do have FOMC today, so that may make things a little choppy. So be careful with that.
If we look at Apple here, Apple has bounced up. Now, let me show you guys. This is exactly why you don't just get stuff just because it goes below. You want to see what it's, you know, what it's doing. This thing got below 177, right? Push right back up. All right. So I mean, that, that's just a, a prime example. Some people right there, you literally just talked about it. Don't buy things just because they get here. All right. Really, honestly, the safest, the safest type of day trades, in my opinion, I love to trade breakouts, but in my opinion, the safest day trades are breakouts and retests. So you don't only want to see this thing break this level, but you also want to see it come back and retest and fail. That is a that is a huge confirmation, right? Not saying that you still can't get faked out, but you know, that that's that's just a way to look at it. Um the market is pushing as we kind of expected, and we really should have, really should have probably got calls, honestly. I'm sitting here talking about it. I probably would have we probably would have been done already, you know. This thing pushing straight up, just like we thought. Um, this thing going crazy. Spy is going crazy. Gonna go right into this supply zone, um, and near this level as well. So we'll see what it does up here. Let's see what some stocks are doing. Let's check Amazon. Amazon's not doing much. Now the thing about Amazon. Oh, wow. Yeah, Amazon has this gap, All right? So Amazon has this gap that they can continue to fill all the way down to, what was the last day? Wow, this gap goes all the way down to one, like right at 130, All right? So Amazon, that is a candidate. That's a candidate to come down if things, you know, start going to the downside, simply because it already has a gap. And the spy is coming down. Amazon's going to be coming down. Um, what's some stocks that y'all are watching uh, right now? You know, I've kind of just been giving an overview, just kind of give you an insight, but I haven't really taken a trade yet. It just to give you guys insight to how I think about these things and, and you know, how I like to look. Let's see. Say so I'm watching Tesla, AMD. I see a lot of Tesla. All right, cool. Let's look at Tesla. Let me know if this is, is, if this is helpful. Right. So I know we're just kind of talking a lot about psychology. We're talking a lot about psychology, really, but let me know if this is helpful. <laughs> All right. Let me tell you this up. Let's see what Tesla got going on. Dang, Tesla's all the way down. It came all the way down to 227. So we gotta. Hmm. I didn't even see Tesla this morning. We actually have to kind of start. Looking lower, it tells me. Still has a gap right here. Has a gap right here to fill. Looks like it can really probably come down. I like it around here, honestly. Probably around here would be great. Now, why around this level would be great? For one, for one, it would close this last gap right here. Secondly, it would be retesting this 200 moving average. I like to use the 200 moving average on a daily because it can, that's a place where things can can bounce. So, uh, so yeah, let's see. Yep, but Tesla. Yep, here's so here's by instead of talking about it, we really should have <laughs> we should have got in right here. Should have got in instead of talking about it, seeing it break this trend line right here. Should have got in instead of just looking at it. But it is what it is. I'm just trying to focus on making sure everybody understands, you know, what's going on, what I'm thinking about. Let's see. This thing is coming up. Let's see what happens inside of this. That's what's going to be interesting to see. And the thing about trading, right? The the thing that is too, that makes this thing super hard is <laughs> is one thing to just hear 
or it's one thing to see it, you know, but it's a whole nother thing to be able to do it on your own, like and, and see it live. Like it is so hard to to do this stuff live, right? Because I mean, when you get into a trade, then you gotta deal with the emotions and you're dealing with other things. Like it's just so much you have to take into account. It's a lot harder to do this live by yourself. Um so that's that's why it's important to have a community of like-minded people, right? You always bouncing ideas because I'm only one set of eyes, you know, so I'm not gonna see everything that you see. Just like that Tesla. I didn't see, I didn't even see that Tesla. We'll be able to replay this Zoom. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, Miss Michelle. I will um drop this Zoom. It is being recorded. So I will, I will definitely drop that. Um question for y'all is anyone like if I, I recorded this to the cloud, so it's gonna be saved to my account. Is it a way to still get this um, live session like on a YouTube type of form, even if it's saved on the cloud from uh, Zoom? I'm not too sure on that. You can upload there. OK. All right. Really want to see. And download it to your computer, then upload to YouTube. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Richard. I'm going to definitely do that. Um, I'm going to drop the Zoom recording. I'm going to also you know, put it on YouTube because although although we probably should have took this trade right here, um, probably should have took this, had a good volume, broke this trend line and everything. I think we got some valuable, you know, valuable little psychology out of it. But we're kind of looking to see what it does right around here i want to see what it's doing here let's check apple all right it's apple seeing some people put in amd amd is coming back down looks like all right, Tesla. XOM. Let's see. Let's see what XOM looks like. XOM is trying to push up. Now, think about XOM. XOM is kind of in a breakout right here, but not kind of in a breakout. They actually are in a breakout, and they actually the same type of thing, right? So breakout, this is the, the level right here that it needed to break. 109.16 is a weekly level from the past. This was the breakout. You see it broke out, and now it's kind of in this retest mode. All right, so you're kind of looking to see. You're looking to see what, what this thing does, you know, today. I'm going to probably tell a lot. I was hoping that we would be able to catch something. Not going to force nothing, but I was hoping we would be able to catch something. Let's see Roku. Roku's all the way back at 80. All right. Spy. Interesting to see what Spy kind of does here. I'm interested to see what Spy does. Ideally, Ideally, I would like to kind of see it kind of get here and form like a bearish type of um, candle on the five minute here. That's ideally what I would like to see. Um, and then from that point, so you might say, okay, well, if you see it, you know, being bearish up here, where would your targets be? You can make a few targets, right? So since since I've, what, something that I like to do with my, uh, you know, supply and demand is since I have this uh, supply right here on the 15 minute, I like to find my demand, right? So I would, my target here on the 15, if I'm just talking about a zone, I would put mine, like, you know, you may make your zone a little bit different. That's cool. I will be aiming for somewhere. I'll be aiming for somewhere here. As far as the, you know, demand. 
um, as far as levels. The stand starts, you know, being bearish and rejecting. First kind of take profit you can use. It needs to break this 443.5. It has to break that first. Then you kind of want to start using these levels right here. So under this could be a take profit point. This could be a take profit point. And then kind of from this point, you have another level right here. You know, you have three levels that, you know, could act as a take profit. Because this thing could come back down right here and, and bounce and go higher. So um, it's at 444 right now. Let's see what it does. Let's see. So it has what? This is a five minute candle right here. It still has a minute left on a five minute. Um, this zone does go all the way up here though. So this thing could push a little bit higher and it could blast right through. The thing that will negate zones is, is volume, right? Momentum. So this thing has too much momentum. It's going to blast straight through. This is just, um, you know, just using this kind of stuff for reference and things like that. So let's see. If I and let me go ahead and start looking at a contract that I would maybe use. Um, but right now this thing is, is pretty strong right now. But if it starts showing weakness, let me see what I would possibly get into. Let's see. And I know it's 9:50 now. I'll you know, be on for a few more minutes to kind of see what this thing does. Honestly, the momentum is so strong right now, looking like it might blast straight through, but we'll see. If I was to get in this, now keep in mind, I am a more risky type of trader. So that's that's number one, All right? So a lot of times I, sometimes I do play zero days and things like that. Um, But if I wanted to go a little bit safer, I know we got FOMC today. If I wanted to go a little safer, I would probably get a 444 for um the 23rd of august that would be that would be a very safe contract for me just simply because you know simply because it would let's see what it does here ideally kind of want to see it come back up and retest and see what it kind of does here or see it break below this either one would kind of be Either one would kind of be good, All right? So I'm just making a trend line right here. I'm just making a trend line right here. So notice I use a lot of different things together, All right? So I have a zone, I got a trend line, I got some levels, All right? I like to use different things, um, not just one. Uh, this thing could, and notice if it comes down to this trend line, it will also be testing this level. So it could come right here and bounce. Right, because the trend line is right here. It could come right here and break. Because if it comes down right here, it's going to be breaking not only the trend line, but also be breaking the uh, you know, the level as well. So we got a, a few different things that we're kind of possibly seeing here. Let's see what it does. Ideally, ideally, when I like to take rejects like this, I like to kind of see it reject on a five minute. Um. That's that's ideally what I like to see. But we'll kind of see what it does. We'll see what it does. And a place that you could use as a stop loss is new high of day. You could simply use a new high of day as a stop loss. So let's see what this thing does. I want to see it try to come up here. If I take it on this one minute, I do want to see it come up and retest it one more time on this one minute. I would love to see that. If it comes up and retest and fails, then I would be looking, I'll be looking to enter on that. But right now it kind of rejected it on its own here. But let's see. I really want to see it come up bounce off this trend line and reject one more time. That's ideally what I would love to see. But if this thing starts breaking down, it's, it's, it's coming down, I'm going to tell you. Probably going to come down. Might bounce here, let's see. Let's 
see what Spy does here. Okay. So it's at is at this trend line. So if this thing I'm looking for it to either come back up here and retest or for it to just straight reject this trend line right now and fall. So if this thing falls below, this thing gets below this 443.5. Um, I'm looking to scalp. I'm looking to scalp it below 443.5, or I want to see how this thing reacts right here. One of the two. Either way, it's fine with me. That's what I'm looking for. See what we get. Notice we also want to see some volume. You want to see some volume too. You want to see some volume. It's retesting this trend line. So we're either looking for this retest of this trend line or we're looking for a retest of this level up here. Either way, you're going to need some volume for this thing to come back down. You got to have volume. See what it's doing. Let's see. We're getting close. See if we get some volume. Yeah. Looking forward to come down. I'll set my actually I'll do a tight stop loss because I'm going to I'm gonna scout this. My stop loss is going to be right. I give it a little bit more room. I put my stop loss. Let's see. I'd like it to be. I want to give it a little room without giving it too much room. I just put my stop loss right here, four forty three point nine two. I'll give it right there. Um. Yeah, that's all. That's all the room I'm giving. I'm not giving no more room than that. Got volume, but now you just gotta kind of see what it does. Gotta see what it does. Let's see. We need a continuation down right here. You need to break this level. You see it's kind of holding this level right now, which you kind of, you know, we knew that this was a level here. So you want to see this thing continue down. It needs to break this low. Well, this is not a low, but it needs to break this right here to try to continue downward. If it doesn't, looks like it may try to pop back up. We'll see. See what it does. Let's see. Now, the thing that's interesting right here, the thing that makes this kind of interesting is on the one minute, this is very interesting because if you look right here, now this thing can be invalidated easily for sure. But if you kind of look right here, Looks like we could possibly, possibly come back up here and maybe form this, or we could blast straight through. I mean, we could blast right through these, you know, these levels right here and make it, you know, higher high and kind of be pushed up a little bit before FOMC. But um, 
we'll see. Let's see what we're looking like on the five minute. Five minute, we had this rejection candle where we expected. it. Now we're kind of right here at this 443.5. So as we kind of expect to be a little iffy here. So we need to break. We need to break below this. If we don't, if we keep holding this, we might, um, you know, bounce back up. But we need to break below that. Let's see what it does up here. Hopefully this thing can go ahead and do what it's gonna do. So I'm finna have to leave. <laughs> finna have to leave. I need this thing to go ahead and do what it's gonna do, man. So we can go ahead and kind of show you guys the result of this thing. Um, right now, down a little bit right here. Right now, down one percent on the contract. Right now, so if we really need it to break below here. Um, to continue downward. If it doesn't, might start pushing back up here, might hit this stop loss. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. I am in five contracts. It's consolidating. Yep, it's consolidating. You know, but we kind of expected that because we know that this is a key level here, right? So we know it's a key level. Um, so kind of, you know, expect that a little bit. Let's see if we get a break below. If we don't, then I might not be able to sit here and just, you know, continue to watch it, but there we go. All right. It's up a little bit right there. All right. And I, you know, I don't want to let this thing go against me just because I said, you know, I'm not going to have to leave very soon. So. Let me move my stop loss now, but it won't be a loss. But look at that volume. That's exactly what you want to see. And it's up 4%. And it hit that level of possible take profit if you're scalping. So, you know, if you wanted to take it at that level, you definitely can. We're still falling. Look at that volume. Hey, that's how it's done. So you can take, so you can take that, man. Five percent right there. You can go ahead and take it. Um, what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna close. I have five contracts. I'm gonna close three. I'm gonna close three. I mean, I'm not. I just want to really get on here and kind of show you guys my thought process. So I'm gonna close three right here at five percent. Um, I'm gonna leave two runners, and the runners, uh, my stop loss on these runners are going to be above 443.74 so until we get above 443.74 my runners are going to be holding in uh so seven percent go hey that's how it's done though that is how it's done right there that's exactly how it's done That's exactly how you do it. I hope that made sense, man. <laughs> um, we literally just talked through, we just talked through everything right here on live, right? We talked through everything. Um, live trading, just talked through everything. We just made a great trade on, um, what was that, SPY? We just made a great trade on live uh, with SPY on Zoom here. Let me know if that made sense. If you like that breakdown, how I broke this stuff down, if it made sense, you know, let me know. It hit these levels perfectly. Let's see. Did this make sense to anybody here? There we go. Perfect, 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 perfect. All right.
right. So, so, so like I said, um, that you know, that's how I like to do things. Uh, I run a level to level system, so um, I would say I'm gonna hold these runners, but uh, once it when it keeps coming down, you want to continue moving your stop loss. You know, move your stop loss as it keeps you know moving down. Um, right now my stop loss, not stop loss, but I want to take profit if it gets above here. Now let me move it to here, lock in even more profit. So let me go ahead and change that on my order. Um, if it gets above, I'm changing this on my order. If it gets above, what is that? 443.5 to sell my contract. Um, yeah. All right. So this thing looking like it can possibly, it can possibly come back down to this here. Now, if it breaks this, we, we're gonna be looking kind of kind of ugly. But um, I trade from my phone. I trade from my phone and um. I use Think or Swim, so. I hope you guys like that breakdown. I hope it made sense. I hope you guys learned something on this live trading. Um, you know, just wanted to do this just to, you know, for the culture. Um, I appreciate y'all for hopping on. If you got any questions, uh, let me know. And um, yeah, hope everybody has a great day. Um, once again, my stop loss, well, it's not stop loss, but my take profit point for here is this 443.5. So that's where my contracts will be stopped out at. If it doesn't get there, I will be in the trade. So, hey, it is what it is. Thank y'all for hopping on. Hope y'all have a great day. Trade safe, man. Trade smart. Don't make no crazy decisions. We got FOMC today. No need to force anything. Um, peace out, everybody. Hope y'all have an amazing day. Thank y'all.